Good day everyone and welcome back to another beautiful video on my channel. In this video, you guys are going to watch our crabbing adventure we have done in Finnis River located in Dundee in Northern Territory of Australia. Me and my couple of mates went on a boat and caught mud crabs with crab pots. We also cooked them in the wild and ate them. I'm going to share our journey in this video and if you still haven't subscribed to this channel, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon to watch more videos like this. And without any further delay, let's start our journey. Got a good feeling about this one. Oh, I can hold the crab. See this, Robert! That's See where it. he is. It's our tradition when we catch crab, then we can drink beer. <laughs> so now it doesn't matter what time it is, we get to drink some beer. Early in the afternoon, just before the incoming tide, we packed all our crabbing gear, got our board ready and left from our place to the river. Crabs! Yeah! After a few minutes of drive from Dundee Beach, we reached one of the boat ramps in the river and launched our boat in the river. This river is called as Finnis River, located in south of Darwin. It is a long river and a very famous river for fishing and crabbing, also for deadly crocodiles. Case, how you going? Good mate, good. You're getting some crabs today, eh? Uh, we should get a few, mate. We, yeah. should get a few. we started our journey in the river and these are my two good friends, Rob and Justin, who are going to come along the whole video. Our plan was to throw all the crab pods in suitable locations before the tides come in and Rob and I started right, chopping the baits and started the tying onto the crab pods. On the pods? For the baits, we used barramundi fish fillets which What's were caught by Rob, Rob last week. Like he also told me that barra fillets are good baits to attract mud crabs. Here. After a few minutes of travelling, we reached our first spot to put our crab pod. It's a shady, shallow spot with mangrove plants around and where mud crabs normally get Seems caught. Like we put our first crab pot there and threw the rope and float over a mangrove plant to pull out the crab pot later. Is it a fresh water one or a no, salt water one? When did you catch that? Uh, uh, maybe. We also kept preparing the next crab pots with baits and ropes to put them in the next pots. We threw our next pots in shady and muddy areas near shore where there are more mangrove plants. That's where the mud crabs normally stay during tide times and in this video also we caught many mud crabs from those areas. We also took some big circular crab pots with us and we also got them ready to throw into the river for crabs. Now 
Normally, incoming tides occur two times a day, early in the day and later in the day. This time, we were expecting the second one for the day. Normally, people put their mud crabs just before the tides come in and check them after the tides came in. Mud crabs normally come with the tides and if people are lucky, they will catch them. We took 10 to 12 crab pods with us on that day and we kept setting them up and putting them in different suitable locations where we could catch mud crabs. After we threw the last one into the river, we decided to roam around in the river for some time and then come back and check all of our crab pods. While we were just sightseeing in the river, we also saw a couple of water currents in the river. I believe those water currents would be created because of wind and gravity. After the incoming tide time passed and the water level increased, we were on our way to check our crab pods. We went to check our first crab pod. I pulled that out of the water to check but there was nothing inside the pod except our bait. No luck on the first one guys. When we pull out the crab pods and put them back into the river, we should make sure they are put back in the right direction as the mouth of the crab pods faces the river flowing direction so that the crabs coming in the tides will easily enter and get caught. Legendary. 
after some time we checked our second pod. There was no crab in the second one either. The next port also didn't have any crabs. We thought we didn't allow enough time during the incoming tides. <laughs> Edit a crab in an animation. We also had a joke about editing and putting a crab in animation on my video as we didn't get any crab in the first few crab parts. Oh yeah, baby. Huh? In the next pod, we caught a crab and a small trout What's fish. That What's that fish? Caught. Look at the size of this one. Wow. It was a big red mud crab, looked like half cooked with big claws. It definitely got a lot of flesh in it. Maybe we check it, bro. After we caught the crab, we put that in our S key wow. with eyes to calm him down. We also tied the small fish we caught as fresh bait onto the crab pod and threw that again into the river. One more Rob checked the next pod and he was lucky with the first one. It had a big green crab in it and he was very delighted. But when we tried to catch him, he fell into our boat and we wrangled with him for a little bit before catching and putting him into the ski. Put your finger on the other one. Good job, Bob. Yeah, he's, got his hands busy. he's a good Yeah, good size one, eh? Come on, leave that, bro. Blow on his nippers. Let him go, mate. Okay. Grab that. Oh. Let, him go now. Yeah, let, go. let him go, mate. He's not going to let go of this. Let go, mate. Grab some. They grab a On top of the other one. Yeah. It is also important to put some leaves or something in between two crabs when you put them in the same esky. They would fight to each other if we didn't do so. You want? There you go. Good job, Max. Try that on you. Quick shot. Then we were on our way to check our last three to four crab pods and if we couldn't catch any crabs from them, we decided to leave the pods in the river overnight for the next incoming tide and check them all in the next morning. Check 
build your muscles up, mate. It's a little We also one, checked eh? our last pot for the day and there was nothing in that pot. Uh -huh. More of the same from the magnificent. Hell then. With checking that pot, we decided to leave all our pots in the river overnight for the next incoming tides and come back and check in the morning. We came to the board ramp and left to our place to spend the night. Next day, early in the morning, we went to the boat ramp and got our boat ready for the next day adventure, expecting more crabs from our crab boats. Ready? Pick it up, mate. We reached the first place where we put our first crab pod and Here pulled that out of Kenny the water. What Great we smash, noticed eh? was our crab pod yeah, was smashed up. and damaged by a crocodile. Crocodile. Guys? No? In the night, when up. the tide level was low, probably a crocodile would have come to the shore crocodile, and it smashed our pot and ate the bait and maybe any crabs inside our pot too. We moved to our second pot and checked that. There was no crab uh, or no. either bait in that pot, but the pot looked fine. Yeah, Any crab like. would have entered the pot, ate the bait and sneaked out of the pot. That should be a very clever crab. Come on, get him in. The third pot we checked had a crab in it. It's all right. We were lucky it was a small mud crab with a single claw.
We caught the first crab for the day and secured it well in the ski. Then we went to check our next crab pot. In that location, I could be clearly able to see how far the water has come down during the low tide and Rob and Justin told that then only the incoming tide started coming in. Checking that pot, there was no crab in that pot. What time is the tide today? It's running in now, just starting to. Just started. I pulled out the pod, tied a new bait and put it back in the same spot to hopefully get a crab with the incoming tide. Got a good feeling about this one. Oh, I can Lord feel it. a crab. Lord, it crab on the I, can, I can smell a crab. When we were approaching the next crab pod, all three of us felt like it got a crab in it. That's where he is. That feeling was not wrong guys. Actually, we caught the biggest crab during that trip from that place. It was a big crab. We got him out of the crab pod and put it in our ski. That was the second crab for the day. Here we go. Things are starting to hot up, tide's coming in. Mag's starting to get the hang of it. Starting to warm to it. In the next crab pod, unfortunately, there was no crab, but our bait was still there. Yeah. I put it back into the river. On our way to the next crab pod's location, we also saw a small crocodile of nearly two meter long. He was having a relaxed time till we approach and then he ran away into the water. We can see plenty of them here in the Finnish River region and in any river of Northern Territory, Australia. Northern Territory is very famous for its deadly crocodiles. Our next crab pot had nothing in it. So I put that again into the water, hoping there will be a crab get caught when we come next time. On the second day, we took some of our crab pots from the old spots and put them in new spots. We put one of them in a narrow creek surrounded by shady mangrove plants. That kind of places are the best spots where we can catch big mud crabs. Yeah. 
I was thinking there was one here before and then I couldn't see it when we were driving in. This one here. From our next crab port, yeah, yeah. we oh, caught yeah. a big crab. Get, get in the boat, in the boat. In the boat. In the boat. On the edge, we were lucky because that crab was that right on the edge yeah. and we anyhow managed it to catch that one. one it was a big red mud one. crab with oh, yeah. only a single claw. Yeah. One claw, yeah. still fine. Wrangle him, mate. Well, that played off. Mm. <laughs> Already. He opens the esky. Uh, the yellow, you put it in that one if you want, or this one. Come on, boy. Nice work. Just turn that one. Love your style, mate. Ooh. Look at From the next few crab ports, unfortunately, no. we haven't got any crabs. The last crab pot we checked before we left for our lunch had a real surprise for us. Oh yeah, baby! This is how it's done! There were a couple of crabs got caught in that crab pot. Both were well stuck in the net and it was a real struggle for a while to get them from the pot and put them into the ski. Anyway, we finally did that and they both were well locked in the ski. After that, we decided to go to Justin's place, which is located a few minutes drive from there in the boat. We went through some narrow creeks to reach his place and it was an interesting journey as well.
Finally, after 20 minutes of travel, we reached our destination. Rob and Justin carried our esky full of crabs and started walking towards the shed. After having some rest, Rob started cleaning the crabs we caught from last couple of days to cook them. He cracked them into halves, cleaned and removed all the unwanted parts and rinsed very well in horse water. After cleaning the crab pieces well, we made a campfire as known as wood stove using available woods from the surrounding. Filled a big vessel with water, put some salt and chopped garlic into it and put all the crab pieces into it to boil them well. By an hour or so, the crab pieces were boiled well and turned into red color. Me and Rob took them all on a tray from the cooking vessel. After that, to cool them down, we put the boiled crab pieces into an esky with ice cubes. Nice little jack. Well, I said put them in. <laughs> Yeah, Rob said that we are not going to put them in the freezer. Cool. Cool, right? After the crab pieces cooled down and ready to eat, everyone grabbed a piece. Close of the mud crabs are the tastiest part which has the biggest flesh and most of the mud crabs also have a fatty layer around their flesh inside the clove which adds more taste when you eat them. We all sat together around the campfire and started eating the crab parts. Mud crabs have really hard shells in some parts and you need to break them with a knife or any heavy object rather than damaging your teeth. They all tasted really well and we all enjoyed our fresh meal from the river. It was also a totally different experience for me and I really loved it. I hope you guys would have enjoyed watching our adventurous journey for crabbing into the wild river and I would also like to thank to Rob and Justin for giving me an opportunity to go crabbing with them and filming this video. I am wrapping up this video here and don't forget to leave a thumbs up on this video and subscribe to our channel for more videos. I will see you all soon in another beautiful video. Till then, thanks for watching and cheers.